Anyway, that's the thing about your grip. Now, I get a lot of questions asked about uh, these bows here, especially when they first get them and they put them together. I'm going to unstring this thing here. Okay. If you look at this real close, you'll see, you know, I'll get it under my white tail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to angle this down just a little bit so you've got my t-shirt as a background. All right. Okay, you get it. There you go. You see that gap in between there? Okay. A lot of guys freak out and they go, oh my God, the limb pad is not fitting on the, it's, you know, the limb is not fitting on the pad. That is in the design. Okay. Now watch what happens to this thing. Okay, take a look, real close look at it. All right, you see that gap there? Now I'm going to string the bow. Now look at this gap. It's still there, but just a little bit right on the tip. All that is all that energy that I've stored into the brace which is giving me a, a nice, nice tight string. Okay, that's going into the preload. All right, now I'm going to rotate the camera back up. Okay, now when you, look out, Doug. If you watch, watch this limb pad now. Okay, as I come to fold raw, watch what happens. There's about half draw. That's where it should be hitting. Okay. I'll do that again so you can see it. Now watch that close up. Okay. What that's doing, once you get to about 20 inches of draw, 18 to 20 inches of draw, this gap closes up here. And it tightens up. At that point, about halfway through the draw, this is when your power wedge kicks in, or it kind of works like a leaf spring, it's like, kind of like an overload system. You start As you start loading it, you load it with brace, and it kicks in, the overloads are carrying that weight. As you come to full draw, it loads, and then the outer, and get back here far enough, and then the outer limb starts bending. The significant part about this is that it, it, the, the load of the bow has got two stages. The first stage is at the, the brace, which loads the wedge, and then as you get to half draw, it starts transferring the load out into the fades. At half draw, then it transfers the load to the working portion of the limb, which, which bends. Watch. See where it's bending? Okay. When you drop the string, the first thing it cinches up is that overload. This comes back and it transfers the rest of the load to the lighter portion of the tip. So what's happening is a standard flat wedge, you're putting all your pressure out on the out of the limb and this is stiff. What we're doing is we're loading the pre-leg, uh, we've got a, a reflexed wedge it's loading up partially and storing energy at the time you're bracing it. All right. Then as you go through the draw cycle, it transfers that load to the working limb. So when you drop the string, the only thing coming forward is the tips. And they stop, and you're harvesting that energy that you're storing in these fades. That's what gives this design an edge. It gives it a little bit more power. It also works as a shock absorber. Uh, by, by reflexing this wedge, and it cinches up tight, once you drop the string, that wedge is coming back, and instead of the vibration going into the riser, or having the riser and the limb, a heavier limb, transfer it back into the riser with shock, it's getting transferred to the arrow, which gives us much, much higher performance, or less hand shock. 
Uh, this design also allows me, by doing a reflex wedge, to do a much smaller, much lighter, uh, lighter weight limb. If you have a, a straight wedge and you carry all your load during the course of the limb, you're going to have to have a heavier limb and you're going to have to have a lot more mass. I've got a reflex tip to this and a reflex wedge, which allows me to, to narrow this limb down. Now, even though this looks just like a longbow, look how near, uh, I mean, just like a recurve when it's unstrung, you look at the tip of that, you see how, how curved that is? And look at the reflex in that wedge, all right? And we'll back up. You see the whole thing. Okay. This is very, very close to a recurve design. Once, once you get it, get it braced, the string is coming right off the knock. Now, depending on the brace height, if you if you brace these things really low, the lower you brace them, the more this string is going to have contact with the limb, which if you get real low, you may get a little bit of noise out of it. You can run these things down to a seven, seven and a quarter, uh, easily six and three quarter to seven, and they'll be laying clear down on the limb. You start, that's kind of the point of uh, where you start losing. Uh, you start getting more, more noise, you're lessening the, the preload on the thing. The prime spot for these bows are uh, about about seven seven and a quarter maybe seven and a half at the most uh, some guys like a, a higher brace height uh, and they you know they, they they think that it's quieter and it is it's a little quieter these design these bows are designed to shoot at a lower brace height so you get a longer power stroke and they've got the preload built into them to stop them at a lower brace height. So there you have it. There's my explanation of my limb design and how it works. And uh, I think this uh, this design gives my bow an edge. Uh, it's a little higher performance than a lot of the bows out there. And, and uh, I hope you shoot it well.